word of God tells us to uh, honor him with our substance, to honor him with the first fruit of our increase. He also tells us that we give sparingly to the increase. Amen. Amen. Questions come forward. Give, 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 give him in Jesus' name. Give, 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 give him in Jesus' name. Give, 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 give him in Jesus' name. And the Verse 1. 
And if you're there, say amen. Amen. And it reads, Be ye not unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what concord has Christ with Baal? Or what part has he that believed with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God. Yes. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separated, mm -hmm. said the Lord. Mm -hmm. And touch not the unclean thing, mm -hmm. and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye be sons, and you be, and ye be my sons and daughters, said the Lord Almighty. And the last verse, chapter seven, verse one. Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting. Somebody say perfecting. Perfecting. Perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. The grass withers and the flower fades away. Amen. But the word of God will last forever. Amen. Now I'm going to preach on the topic stand separated from a connected world. Mm -hmm. Stand separated from a connected world. Right. Now we're living in a time where connectedness is the rule of the day. We're connected to our cell phones. We're connected to Facebook. We're connected to TikTok, Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram. Come on, somebody. Amen. And we're always connected with those around us. Amen? But being connected to those you love and to those who need you is one thing. But there's another kind of connectedness that is not so good. Some of the common buzzword or buzzwords in our world today that we often hear are tolerance, mm -hmm. acceptance, mm -hmm. openness, yeah. seeker friendly, mm -hmm. coexist, mm -hmm. and inclusive. Now the ideal behind all these terms is togetherness mm -hmm. or being connected on a human level. There's a con concerted effort in the world today to bring everyone together under the same umbrella. One world, one society, and one church. Mm -hmm. And that is the heartbeat of the world, and sadly, it's becoming the heartbeat of some churches. Mm -hmm. And allow me to say, the world will get what they want mm -hmm. when the Antichrist comes on the scene. Oh, yeah. Because some of his main objectives will be one world order, mm -hmm. one world government, one world currency, one world religion, and one world dictatorship. Mm -hmm. But for those of you who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, the call and the chosen, I would like to remind you this morning that God did not call his people to be inclusive, but God has called his people to be exclusive. Say yes, amen if you yes, yes. You see, we are to be different from the world because God has set us apart from the world and we are aliens. We are pilgrims. We are strangers in a foreign land. Yes. You see, just because we are on this, in this planet, on this world, does not mean we're in the world, but we're not of this world. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. You see, when you came to faith in Jesus Christ, your address changed. All right, now. It changed from earth yes. to now heaven. Yes, yes. You are no longer a physical being, but you are a spiritual yes, being. Yes. Come on, somebody. Right. Now, as far as us coexisting with other religions, uh -huh. if you believe that there's more than one way to heaven, if you believe we were brought here to planet Earth by aliens, <laughs> if you believe we evolved and we're not created by God. If you believe everyone is going to heaven. If you believe that Jesus is not the son of God. And he's just another prophet. 
If you believe Jesus did not die on the cross for the sins of the world, my Bible says, come out from among them. You see, separate yourself from them. You see, we can't all be right. Yes. But for me and my house, yes. Yes. we're going to stick with the truth. Yes. And yes. his name is Jesus Christ. Yes. Because there's proof and evidence <clears throat> that he died on the cross. Yes. There's proof and evidence that he was placed in a bar tomb. Yes. There's proof and evidence that he got up yes. after three days and three nights. Because the tomb they buried in it, buried him in is still empty today. Yes, yes. There is proof and evidence and an eye and eyewitnesses account yes. about 500 people mm -hmm. saw him after he rose from the grave. Yes. And there is proof and evidence that he lives because he lives in me yes. and he lives in you. Yes. I'm not who I used to be. I have changed and I could not change Thank myself. You. It was Jesus Christ that changed me. Yes, <laughs> so I know he lives because he lives in me. Yes, Say amen if you hear me. Amen. The fact is, <clears throat> we're called to be vastly different from the world around us. Amen. And not fall for the okie doke religions, mm -hmm. false teaching, and distraction the world throws at us to cause fear. I don't know if y'all know, know this. I mean, well, you old schoolers like myself. Public Enemies sang a song years ago that said, don't believe the hype. Oh, man, am I all by myself? <laughs> hey, man, don't believe the hype. And I'm here to tell you, don't believe the garbage the world tries to throw at us in an effort to lure us into believing yes. worldly lives. Yes. Uh -huh. So what? The Defense Department decided to declassify some information about some unidentified, unidentified flying objects. I don't care. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Come on, yeah. I don't care about this fight with abortion and all those things. Amen. My point is, if you live your life with Jesus Christ, you will protect that baby that you're carrying. Right. It's that simple. Hallelujah. It's that simple. And the thing is, is that ain't nobody got to say about that but God himself. Right. He's already defined what murder is. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Right. And as children of God, we should not be for abortion. Yes. But yes. I'm, here, I'm here to tell you, don't be distracted by those things because we believe what we believe and we know who we belong to. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the world will throw things at you yes. to distract you, yes. to get you off course. Yes. <laughs> to have you looking to the left, the left, and have you looking to the right. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I mean, my military left, right? <laughs> so don't allow the world to distract you in the confusion and mess and garbage in the world. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. We get too wrapped up in politics. Mm -hmm. We get too wrapped up in this president or this senator or this congressman. But as children of God, it ain't about politics. It ain't about the world. It ain't about our thoughts. It's all about Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. And the Apostle Paul said, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. Mm -hmm. I may not know what is going on around me or what is going on in the world. But there's one thing I do know. Mm -hmm. Forgetting those things which are behind yeah, and reaching yeah. forth into those things which are before. Mm -hmm. I press toward the mark yes. up for the prize of the high calling of God yes. in Christ Jesus. Yes, yes. In other words, separate yourselves, my brothers and sisters, and keep your eyes on the prize. Yes. And his name is Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. Let the world do what they do. Let the world do their thing. But don't let us get caught up in the world. Amen. Right. Amen. And let me say this, just to clarify. So somebody said, oh, the pastor said, he, you don't care about abortion. We care about God's people. Yes. We, care, we care about no little baby, an infant is murdered because, it's, because the mother chooses not to have them. Come on, somebody. Amen. Abortion is against God. It is a sin. And if we're followers of Jesus Christ, we should be against that sin as well. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. Yes, we care. We care for that mother who was raped 
and has to make a decision if they're going to have that child or not. We care about that, that mother that got married out of wedlock or whatever the case may be. We care and we love them. And we just want them to know that God loves them too and that baby that they care. Yes. yes. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. It's all about what Jesus has blessed us with. Yes. And if you're carrying a baby in your body, Jesus blessed you with that yes. baby. Yes. Right? yes. Regardless of the circumstances. Right. Amen, Amen. somebody. Amen. God Amen. created the heavens and the earth. Amen. And he created human beings. And we should not take away something that God has created. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 Let us know that. So, uh, so don't ask me for pro-life or anti-abortion. I'm pro-Jesus. Amen. 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 I'm all about what the Word of God says. Yes. And I'm living my life according to what the Word of God says. Yes. I may stumble along the way. I may trip up. But thank God I can go to my Savior. Yeah, Lord, thank you. I can go to my Savior and say, Lord, I need some help in this area. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Lord, take away the things that is not pleasing in your sight. Yes. And guess what? He will do it. Yes, yes, Come on, somebody. Yes, Can't nobody do you like Jesus. Yes, Can't nobody do you like the Lord. Yes, yes. Now, in our text, this trait of separation was so sorely lacking in the church of Corinth. Of all the churches mentioned in the New Testament, the church in Corinth was undoubtedly the most worthy. If the church in Philippi was known for its compassion, and the church in Ephesus was known for its commitment, the church in Corinth was known for its carnativity. It was a fleshly church. It was a worldly church dwelling in a wicked city. Now, the city of Corinth was so vile that, he, that to be called a Corinthian meant that you were a person of no more standing. <coughs> and sadly, the evil of that society had penetrated the church. And things had gotten so bad in Corinth that there was little distinction from the church and the world around it. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm talking about something that happened back then that's happening today. Yes. Paul is letting them know that things do not have to be that way. These, these verses will tell us everything we need to know to, re to remain separated in a connected world. Yes. Even though the world and some churches today are blended together that you can't tell them apart, mm -hmm. God still expects his people. Yes. He expects his children. Yes. He expects the call, the chosen, mm -hmm. to be different. <laughs> They expect us to stand apart from the world around us, and these verses tell us how to accomplish that. Yes. Now, there are many, there may be some, here at New Life Missionary Baptist Church, who wants the church to become more modern, or keep up with the times, I should say, mm -hmm. by bringing in things to draw people to church to get the seats filled. Mm -hmm. But these verses not only tell us how to be different, but they also show us why we should remain different as well. Yes. While a lot of churches are places of worship is changing to accommodate the world, mm -hmm. we have some very good reason for staying in the old paths of righteousness and worship. Yes. And I say that to say, you can bring all the entertainment you want into the church to draw people into the church. You can be a bestseller in a book, of a book, to bring people in the church. But the thing is, if you're not here in this place of worship to receive the word of God, to look at yourself based on the word of God, and ask Jesus to change your life, you are in the wrong place. Yes, yes. Because the thing is, the church is not about selling any books. The church is about not how many of the bringing a Starbucks into the church. The church is not about the entertainment. The church is not about mind ministry, praise dancing, or none of those things. The church, the body of Christ, will always be about the head, who is Jesus Christ. Yes, yes. I ain't getting no amen. Yes, amen. Amen. <laughs> what I'm saying is too many things are being brought into the church to draw people into the church. That's right. Jesus said, if I be lifted up. Yes, yes. If I be lifted up, mm -hmm. I will draw all men. Yes. And let me say, he was talking about the time he was going to the cross. Mm -hmm. But it still applies to the day. Yes. Wherever Christ is lifted up, yes. 
the Holy Spirit will convict some folks yes. and, and draw them to Jesus. Yes, yeah. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and as God gives me liberty, I want to preach on the thought, stand connected, I mean, stand separated in a connected world. Yes. Right. And the first point I would like to make is to make is found in verses 14 through 16. I'm sorry, yeah. And it tells us that we are marked by several differences from the world. Mm -hmm. Paul uses several verbs to make his arguments. Mm -hmm. He says fellowship, communion, <clears throat> concord, part, and agreement. Mm -hmm. And all of these speak of something held in common or something shared. Mm -hmm. His basic argument here is that Jesus and his followers have nothing in common with the world around them. He points out this, this truth out by revealing three areas in our lives where there is to be a difference. At first, he points out there is to be a difference in our walk. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And the word righteousness has the ideal of purity of life or of that which is pleasing to God. Mm -hmm. The ideal here is that God's children are to be different from this world in the way that we conduct our lives. Yes, yes. Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 says, Only let your conversations be as it become the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel. Yes. Right? You see, we're not to put on the world but we are to put on Jesus yes. in front of the world. Yes, yes. And second, there is to be a difference in our wisdom. Mm -hmm. Light and dark can have no fellowship. Mm -hmm. Even the tiniest bit of light has the power to dispel the most impressive, oppressive darkness. Mm -hmm. What Paul is talking about here is this. <clears throat> a life governed by the word of God has no shared ground with a life governed by the flesh, the world and the death. We are to be different because we are to live our lives according to the word of God. Yes. We have a different standard of living than the world does. For it is written, if a man love me, he will keep my words and my father will love him and I will come unto him and make our abode with him. Yes. It is written, yes. if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Uh -huh. You see, we have the light, so let us walk in the light. But be careful of the words of men and women who will add or subtract from the word of God. Avoid legalism, avoid modernism, but walk in the pure living word of God. Come on. I'm looking at some people, y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Don't let the false teaching fool you. Get in the word of God, study it for yourself, and let it get in you. And once it gets in you, now you're walking in it. Yes. And yes. once you're walking in, it means that you're living in the word of oh, God. Yeah. Yes. And then you will not be bamboozled. You will not be led astray. You will be, you'll know what is true and what is false. That's right. That's right. When it comes to the things of God. And the third point is there is to be a difference in our worship. Mm -hmm. Paul reminds us that we are God's possession. Y'all know he's bought at a price, right? Yeah. Yes. And his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. That shed blood on the cross bought us. Yes. Amen. Just as there is no common ground between Jesus and the devil, Baal, and between one who confesses Christ and one who denies him, the idols of the flesh and the world have no business in the temple of God, which means you. Yes. Allow me to remind you this morning that this place of worship, the four walls in which we are sitting in right now, is not the temple of God. Come on, somebody. But the temple of God is you. Yes. Amen. 
Those who are saved are God's temple. Come on, somebody. And the things of this world, things of this world, do not belong in your life, nor do they have a place in your worship of the Lord. Just as your physical life is to be clean, so too is your spiritual life. Yes. And this speaks volume to the modern church. Our duty is to not to make the house of God and our worship here at New Life seeker friendly. Yes. Our duty is to concentrate, consecrate ourselves to the will of God and to worship Him in spirit and in truth. Yes. See, we have no business changing our music changing our preaching or lowering our standards to attract the world to the house of God. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Yes, Lord. Yes. We are to place the totality of our being on God's altar and lead the growing or drawing business to Jesus Christ. Yes. Instead of trying to be seeker friendly, the church should strive to be spirit friendly. Yes, right. We need to create an atmosphere yes. in which the spirit of God can work, move, and bless. Yes, and as we do that, he will see to it that those he desires to be here will get here to be saved and will grow in grace. Amen. Right. Yes. And the word concord in verse 15 equals harmony. It refers to musicians who play the same piece of music the same way at the same time. You see, we get our modern word sympathy, sympathy, sympathy from this word. Just as there's a <clears throat> disharmony when a pianist plays a song one way and the organist play it another way at the same time, which causes what? Disharmony. So there's disharmony between Jesus and everything he. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. 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 <laughs> the whole point here is this. God's people are to be different from the world around them yes. because they possess a new nature. Yes. Once you confess with your mouth, yes. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. Yes. And knew in your heart, your mind, body, and soul, that God has raised him from the dead, it says you shall be saved. Yeah. So when that happens, my brothers and sisters, a new nature yes. comes upon you. Because yes. yes. now you're covered in the blood of Jesus. Yes. Now you're filled with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Amen, somebody. Yes. Now you, you're loving people because God loved you first. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. You love thy neighbors, not so. Yes. You're not backstabbing. You're not lying on people. Yes. You're not gossiping. Yes. You're not doing any of those things anymore because you are in your new nature. Yes. Yes. So your own nature will do that. Your own nature will back, 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 people do everything to put the attention on you. Yes. But now in your new nature, yes. you know it's all about Jesus yes. Christ. Yes. And, and it is not about you. That's what the new nature, that's what Jesus did for us yes. when he died on that cross. Yes. He gave us salvation, then he put a spirit in us, yes. which is called the Holy Spirit. Yes. Yes. And let me say, a pig rolls in the mud because it is a pig. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you could change the pig's nature to that of a sheep, yes. it would stay out of the mud and head straight for the green grass. That's right. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. If you're saved today, you have a new nature. Yes. It's not like the old nature, but it is different, and it is hungry for the Lord and his will. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Yes. When you realize what Jesus has done for you, yes. all I want to make you do is yes. run yes. and shout. tell somebody yes. and shout and tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Yes. But see, over time, that wears out on people. Well, I don't feel like church today. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like Bible study on Wednesday. Well, let me hear. Let me tell you this: If you love Jesus, you're gonna love being where His people are. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, and we need to be among each other. Yes. Now, I don't know how, how much I can reiterate that, or how much the Bible tells commands us to do that. Mm -hmm. But if you yearn for the things of God, you're gonna yearn for His people. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So we are marked by several differences from the world, and my second point is found in verse. 14 and 17, where man is by specific commands. In verse 14, we're commanded to be segregated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I know segregation may sound bad to some, but God calls us to be segregated. Yes. This command pertains to people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It comes from the Old Testament, Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 10. Mm -hmm. You see, the ox and the ass were two vastly different animals. Mm -hmm. The ox was clean, the ass was not. They possess two vastly different natures. Mm -hmm. To yoke them together was to invite trouble. Mm -hmm. The unequal, unequal yoke is a military term. Mm -hmm. Come on, Dunzel. <laughs> it means stay within your own ranks. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. In other words, stay in your lane. Yes. Uh -huh. And this phrase usually applied to marriage. And it is wrong to marry outside of your faith if you are saved. Come on, somebody. But there is more to it than that. It has the ideal of not walking with the world. Yeah. The believer needs to closely monitor all of his or her relationships yeah. because walking with the world often results in walking like the world. Amen. Amen. For the word says, do not be deceived. Mm -hmm. Bad company corrupts. Good morals. That's right, That's right, Pastor. Amen. And in verse 17, we're commanded to be separated. Yes. Mm -hmm. This command pertains to practices. Mm -hmm. Just as we are to refuse to walk with the world, we're also to refuse to walk like the world. Yes. Let the world do its own thing, y'all. Yes. Yes. We who are saved are to be different. We are called call out people. And we are to be different. Mm -hmm. Many have read the words of Paul, and we talked about it this morning, in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 19 through 23, and concluded that Paul altered his lifestyle and message to accommodate different crowds of people. But Paul did not compromise the word or give, or give the itchy ears what they wanted to hear. Mm -hmm. But he applied the gospel in different ways to speak to different groups. Yes. In Paul's personal life, he lived in such a way that he did not offend anyone, whether they were group Jews, Gentiles, or Christians. Mm -hmm. In other words, he lived a life of self-sacrifice and self-control. He didn't change the word of God to, to suit the crowd. He just lived to please Jesus. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Amen. We should not compromise the word of God because we want these seats filled. Yes. Yep. Or because right. someone who is in a leadership position is a big titer whose lifestyle is contrary to God. Yes. We need to do like Paul and live our lives for Christ. Yes. God has given us the weapon to go forth into the world to yes. proclaim and preach and all we got to do is stick to the script. Amen. Amen. We ain't got to come up with a new ideas and new gimmicks to get people to come. Just tell them about the good news of yes. Jesus yes. and the Holy Spirit will convict them to get their hearts open. Yes. The problem is not everybody's heart is open That's to right. the word of God. That's right. But you keep on doing what you're doing yes. and tell somebody about yes. Jesus. Yes, yes, I Amen. So we're marked by several differences from the world. We're managed by specific commands. And in verses 17 through 18, we're moved by satisfying constellations. In verse 17, it says, Therefore, come out from among them, and be ye separated, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. And here it is. Mm -hmm. And I will receive you. Yes. There's constellation of his faith. Yes. He said, I will receive you. Those who walk the separate life, separated life, has God's promise that he will receive them. Thank you. And the word receive means to treat with favor. Yes. yes. The Lord. God is saying if you will be separated from this world for my glory, then you will enjoy my favor. Yes. Yes. My smile will be upon your life. Yes. And I don't know about you. But I want God's faith. Yes, I want God smiling yes. upon my life. Yes, yes, Lord. And see, that only happens if you want God to smile upon your life and give you favor. Your life must be a clean, separated life that is dedicated to God. Come on, somebody. And not the world. 
Yes. That is how God will shine on you. Yes, Lord. And in verse 18 it says, <clears throat> and will be a father, and will be a father yes. unto you, mm -hmm. and ye shall be my sons and daughters, mm -hmm. saith the Lord Almighty. Yes. So there is the consolation of his fatherhood. Right. Now all the redeemed are there. Now all those who are redeemed, those who are saved, are the children of God. Mm -hmm. And he is a father to them all. Yes. Uh -huh. However, just because all enjoy the relationship with God, mm -hmm. there are many who do not enjoy the fellowship with God. Yes, yes. Let me explain. Often there is a rift between the Lord and some of his children because of what they have in their hearts and in their lives. When those things are turned or taken care of, and that child turns back to God in holiness and separation, that child will enjoy the sweet fellowship of the Lord once again. Yeah. And let me say, or let me ask you rather, can you remember times when there was a breach in a fellowship, in your fellowship with a parent? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And how sweet it was when that relationship was restored. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And let me say, there is nothing like a restored relationship with God because it brings a peace that surpasses all understanding. Yes. Say amen if you hear me. When you know the Lord is on your side, yes. I don't care what you go through. Yes. Trouble may come your way, yes. but there's peace. Yes. Obstacles may stand in your way, yes. but there's peace. Yes. Walls may be closing in on you, oh, yes. but there is peace. Yes. Because God the Father, yes. God the Son, yes. God the Holy Spirit has me in their hands. Yes, Lord. It's yes. nothing like the security yes. of our Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 So no matter how I mess up, or what bad decisions I make, yes. God's got me. Yes. And he's opened the door for me to just repent of my sin and he will cleanse me of the sin and Wash me. Yes. Come on. Yes. Cleanse me yes. in his righteousness. Yes. Can't nobody do you like Jesus, y'all. Nobody do you like Jesus. You see, the world don't have that option. Uh -huh. That's right. The world don't have that option because they're not God's children. And let me say this. Yes. If you have not confessed with your mouth and knowing your heart, right. God is not your father. All right. All right. All right. Just because you agree with the Bible, just because... You like the promises God has made to us? If you have not come to faith in his son, yeah. you are not his son. Yeah. You are not his child. Yeah. It requires one thing. And Jesus said, and I'm the way, the truth, yeah. and the life. Yeah. And the only way to the Father yeah. is through yeah. me. Yeah. So if you want to be in God's family, if you want to be the sons and daughters we talk about in this scripture, yeah. you need to come to faith in the son. Yeah. That's right. There's no other way, y'all. Right. You can't go around it. You can't go under it. You can't go over it. you got to come through the door of Jesus Christ. Yes, the only way. So we're marked by differences from the world. We're managed by specific commands. We're moved by satisfying, by satisfying constellation. And my final point is this, which is found in chapter 7, verse 1. We are motivated to a steadfast conviction. Yes. Paul says, heaven therefore, these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. So Paul tells us that it is the promises and the person of God that should motivate each and every one of us to seek a closer, more consecrated, and separate walk with the Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. We're called upon to cleanse ourselves of all filthiness of the flesh and spirit. Yes, and this refers to those ex external acts of wickedness and filthiness of the spirit to those internal attitudes of the heart that lead to external sin. Amen, somebody. And we could preach all day about the sins of the flesh. Yes. Oh. However, what we do on the outside is how we feel on the inside. Amen. Or should I say, 
how what comes out of our mouth, what actions we take is what's in our hearts. That's right. Come on. That's right. Yeah. Many people, maybe many of you, have confessed the same sins over and over again. Okay. And still go right out and do the same things again. Mm -hmm. And why? Mm -hmm. Because you hadn't gotten down to the root of the problem. Yeah. The real problem is not with the body, but with the heart. You see, the body may be chastened and bridled, while the heart is a hotbed of sin and evil. The body is not alive until it is brought to life by the will of the heart. And whatever is in the heart will be carried out by the body. Therefore, we must actively cleanse ourselves both inwardly and outwardly so that the favor of the Lord yeah. can rest upon us and upon this church. Yeah. Amen. You see, it is not enough for you to ask for cleansing. The words, let us, is a call for us to become actively involved in the cleansing. Uh -huh. yeah. Or actively involved in the process. Yeah. Yeah. And the phrase, perfecting holiness, has the idea of completing or getting the whole mind of Christ into the soul. It is, it, is, it is about us ceasing to be driven by the flesh, the world, and the devil, and about us beginning to be moved through the life, moved through life by a desire to please the Lord. Yes. Y'all get that? Yes. In other words, this idea of perfected holiness is the idea of Christ in you, living in you, which enables you to live a life that honors and glorifies the Lord. Yes. For the word says, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, mm -hmm. the hope of glory. The word says, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ live in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Yes. See, that ought to make somebody scream and shout. Yes. Because it lets you know that you are never alone. Yes. If you confess with your mouth and know in your heart, you better believe Jesus is with you 24 hours a day, yes. seven days a week. Yes. You are never alone and he will never forsake you. And see, and you see, and here's the here's the here's the caveat to this, if I can say. Since Jesus Christ is in us, we can resist and avoid sin in all its form. Yeah. Uh -oh, oh, I see the eyebrow raised up back there. Since Christ is in us, we can set the fear of God before our eyes by refusing to engage in any thought or activity that would bring God's displeasure upon us. And this may be difficult for some, but here's the key, that I have learned in my journey, in this Christian journey. And that what I have learned is this, is to let go and let God. You see, we try too much to do everything we can on, based on our strength, but we need to rely on the strength of God and His power and allow Him to make the moving and shaking in our lives. We need to stop trying to control things and just give it to God. We need to stop trying to get our children to live right and do right and just turn it over to God. We need to stop trying to tell people how I'm a Christian and, and you can't offend me, you can't do this, you can't do that, and just turn it over to God. The battle is not ours, my brothers and sisters. It is the Lord. All we got to do is submit to him and follow in the footsteps of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that's not hard to do, y'all. It's not hard to do. Say amen if you hear me. Because you're talking, I'm, you're looking at a person who all I did was raise hell with people. I would get in a fight and a drop of just a word you say. I would do anything. I remember pulling guns and everything on people because of this flesh, because of my temper. But God changed me. God changed me and I come to realize that in order for me to live my life for him, 
first I gotta know what Jesus has done for me, know that I am a sinner, and confess of my sin, and receive him in faith as my Lord and Savior. Then let him do everything in my life that is required, and me just follow the leader. Yes, yes. You see, church, when we say church, we're talking about the body yeah. of Christ. Yeah. And if we're the body of Christ, Jesus is the head. Yeah. So this body here of Christ just needs to follow the head, Amen. which is Jesus himself. Yeah. Yeah. And let me say, my brothers and sisters, when you let go and let God, yeah. you'll see that the pressures of this world yeah. you won't struggle with as much. Amen. Because you know who your hope is in. Yes. You know who your faith is in. And you know who your trust is in. Yes. But we got to know. While we're still here on this earth. Amen. While things are being thrown at, it, thrown at us from the left and the right and every which way. We all have a race to run. Yes. And that race is called life. Yes. And if you want to stay connected. Stay. You ain't catching that. If you want to stay separated <laughs> from a connected world, I beseech you, I plead with you, I urge you to keep Jesus in your home. Yes. Keep Jesus on your job. Amen. Keep Jesus in the schoolhouse. Yes. Keep Jesus in the courthouse. Yes. Keep Jesus on your social media page. Yes. Yes. And keep Jesus in your hearts. Yes. You see, can't nobody do you like Jesus, y'all. Yes, and I'm going to say that until he calls me home, because I know can't nobody do me like yes. my Lord and Savior. Yes. But in order for us to run this race, yes. I came to tell somebody yes. <coughs> to keep your eyes on the prize. Yes. Stay focused on Jesus yes. and not the world. Yes. Let me say it's because it's time, it's past time, it's already time, yes. it's right now time yes. to self stay separated yes. from a connected world yes. because Jesus is on his way back. Yes, right back. So stay the course. I don't care what it takes. I don't care if you have to strain every nerve in your body or pull every muscle or use every ounce of your strength. We need to press on toward the mark of the high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, exactly. And I don't know about you, but I'm running for eternal life. Yes, yes. I'm running because I want to see Jesus. Yes. I'm running because this old dusty race, when this old dusty race is over, I shall see my Savior's face. Yes, yes. When this race is over, my brothers and sisters, yes. I will receive my incorruptible crown. Yes. When it's all over, down here. Yes. Oh, I need a little help in here. Come on now. When it's all over, down here. Uh -huh. I'm going to put on my robe, yes. tell the story yes. of how I made it over. Yes, Lord. You see, I came to tell you, yes. if you don't, if you if you don't want the world in you, on, stay focused on Jesus Christ. Yeah. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling yeah. of God in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Don't turn to your left when the world lies on you. Uh -huh. Don't turn to your right uh -huh. when the world tries to come mislead on, you. On, don't let nothing. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Mm -hmm. Don't let nothing or nobody turn you around. Yeah. 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 See, just press on. Follow yes. Jesus yes. and do not worry about anybody, everybody else, <laughs> what everybody else is doing. Yes. Just press on. Yes. Press on. Yes. Press on. Yes. And follow Jesus yes. for yourself. Yes. Do not worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Yes, Keep your eyes on Jesus. Mary's baby. God's only begotten son. <laughs> Keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes. Yes. The chief cornerstone. The King of Kings. Yes. The Lord of Lords. Yes. And if you truly want to stay connected, stay separated from a connected world, don't let nobody, don't let the world yes. turn you around. Yes. Keep your focus on Jesus. Am I right about it? Amen. Am I right about it, my brothers and sisters? Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. I'm going to let, I ain't going to let nobody Turn me around. No. Turn me around. Turn me around. <laughs> yes, Ain't yes. gonna let nobody turn me around. Amen. I'm gonna keep on walking in Christ. Amen. I'm gonna keep on talking in Christ. I'm gonna keep on living my life for Christ. Amen. 
I may struggle, but with the Lord's help, I'm going to keep my eyes yes. and focus on Jesus Christ. Yes. 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 That's the key for, for staying separated from a connected world. Amen. Let Jesus be your guide. Yes. And I don't care what the world tries to throw at you. I don't care what mess they try to give you. Just know this one thing. Satan is the prince of the air, which means he's over the systems of this earth. And he's over it because God allows him to. But as children of God, we need to stay separate. We need to stay in Christ. We need to live our life in Christ. We need to get in the word of God. We need to study the word of God. And we need to let that word get in us. So we can be a living epistle to those who see us. Jesus is on his way back, my brothers and sisters. And somebody said to me this morning, well, people said the same thing to us when we was growing up. Things are worse today than I have ever seen. I'm only 57 years old. Jesus is closer now to coming back for us to meet him in the air than anything else. Amen. Amen. That's why we need to invite people to church, y'all. That's why we need to spread the gospel to somebody. God has called us to share the good news, y'all, and we need to be sharing that news. Come on, somebody. If you love Jesus, if you know that he's your everything, if you know he's made a way out of nowhere, yes. if you know he has put a roof over your head, yes. food in the freezer, yes. and clothes on your back, yes. if you know that can't nobody do you like Jesus, yes, give the Lord some praise in this place. Yes. And let me ask you, are we really expected to remain separated in this connected world? Amen. And the answer is yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we are. But we are to be separated and not isolated. <laughs> remember Jesus? Y'all remember him, don't you? Oh, yes. He lived in this world and he lived a perfectly holy life. Yes, yes. But at the same time, he was a friend to sinners. Yes. Come on, somebody. And like a skilled physician, we are to practice contact without contamination yes, yes. in this world. Come on now. All right, we have to be here and we have to interact with the world around us. Right. We, we are to try to reach them. But even while we live here in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, mm -hmm. we are to shine as lights in the world. Yeah. Let us never be ashamed of the fact that we are to be out of step with this word. Mm -hmm. Let us never be ashamed of what we are, what we believe, and who we belong to. Amen. Instead, let us strive to ensure that it remains that way until Jesus comes. Mm -hmm. If we begin to lower our standards today, we will soon be no different than some churches all around us that have forfeited the presence and the power of God so they might gain the popularity and praise of men. Yes. You see, what you allow in moderation today, will do. you will do in excess tomorrow. Yes. Right. Yes. Maybe you would like to come and pray for new life this morning. Pray that <clears throat> we stay <clears throat> in the old paths of consecration and conviction for the glory of God. Yes. Maybe you need to come and talk to Jesus yourself about your personal walk with him. Yes. If there's any areas of weakness and needs that have been, have been touched on this morning, please come before him and he will meet you. Amen. He promised that he will draw near those who draw near to him. Yes. The doors of the church are open. Amen. Give the Lord some praise in this place, y'all. He's been so, so good. And let me say, as the choir, as the praise team come for the opening of the doors of the church, just know whatever you need in Christ, He has it. Amen, somebody. And God put this on my heart. 
this ser this sermon to let to, to to let all of us know that time is running out. Time to I mean time the, the, the experiment the experiments that people are doing in this world mm -hmm. that are contrary to God yeah. is is there is it's a it's a danger. That's and what I'm trying to say is that he's on his way back. And the question I have for those who are here and those who are watching, if Jesus was to come back today, would you go home and be with him? Yes, the doors are open.